very good morning to all of you. So today I will discuss something about experimental physiology. Till now you have attended the class on hematology, practicals, then clinical physiology, but you have never attended the class on experimental physiology. So today I will introduce you to the experimental physiology. So in experimental physiology, in order to study the response of a living tissue to a stimulus in the laboratory, three basic things are required. So these three basic three things, the first one is a living tissue, a living tissue, the second one is a stimulating device and the third one is the recording device, recording device. So I will discuss one by one. So first thing, a living tissue. So in amphibian experiments, so the non-muscle preparation or the cardiac tissue are used for experiments. Okay. So among all the animals, the frogs are preferred animals for experimental physiology because the number one cause is that the frogs are cold-blooded animals. Since they are cold-blooded, they can survive in average environmental conditions for a longer duration compared to warm blooded animals. Second one is that it is easily available and harmless, mostly harmless. And third one is that the tissues of the frog can imbibe oxygen directly from the atmosphere. So they can survive by, uh, by taking oxygen from the air. So these are the main things why we are choosing the frog. In the, the frogs, again in the frogs, the frog's gastrocnemia sciatic nerve muscle preparation was first used for experimental physiology by Dutch physiologists in the later half of 17th century. The question arises, there are so many muscles present in the frogs, but why this gastrocnemia muscle is preferred over other muscles? The thing is that these gastrocnemia muscles have a large cross-sectional area. Because of the larger cross-sectional area, when it will be stimulated, then it will generate a greater force which will able to move the writing lever or the isotonic lever in the recording device. So this frog's gastrocnemia sciatic nerve muscle preparation will be used in experimental physiology classes and cardiac tissues are also used as a living tissue in this experimental physiology class. So next I will discuss about the stimulating device. What stimulating device is used in the experimental physiology and what type of stimulus is used in the experimental physiology? Before going to the discussion of the stimulating device, you have to know what is a stimulus. So, a stimulus it has been defined as energy made free by change in the environment. The change in the environment may either be a physical or a chemical process. So, there are different types of stimuli are there. The, for example, that may be physical that may be chemical, that may be mechanical, that may be osmotic, and that may be electrical. Out of all these types of stimuli, the electrical stimuli are preferred over, the other, over and above the other types of stimuli. So the causes are that the apparatus for delivering the electrical stimuli is very tidy. The process of stimulation is easily controlled only by making or breaking of a key then it can be localized on the tissues and controlled at a long distance. It is least injurious to the tissues and the intensity of and duration of the stimulus can be easily and accurately controlled in case of electrical type of stimulus. So we will prefer electrical stimulus over the other types of stimulus in experimental physiology. Again, this electrical energy can be used in the form of direct current or galvanic current or that may be alternate current, induced current or the ferratic current. So galvanic current is a continuous process of flowing in or continuous process of current flowing in one direction from anode to cathode. Whereas the ferratic current is a series of pulses of electrons. Each pulse is of momentary duration and pulse sense their duration and sense their direction of flow alternately and any two consecutive pulses flow in opposite direction. But 
uh, in between is galvanic and the ferradic current or the direct or the induced current the induced current is preferred over the other uh, preferred over the galvanic current for stimulation purpose because this galvanic this ferradic current or the induced current is of very short duration and the damaging to the tissues by this induced current is very less and it can be applied repeatedly to the tissues so I have already described about the living tissues and the stimulating device. Now I will go to the recording devices. Recording devices that is used for the recording of this nerve muscle pressure or cardiac tissue response in experimental physiology. So the recording of the response is done by using a writing lever which inscribes on the surface of a moving gram mounted on a chymogram. So the different types of appliances or the apparatus that will be used in experimental physiology will include the following. I will just describe one by one. The first one is the first one is the source of current. Source of current. The first one is the source of current. Source of current. The current that is used. The current that is used is the induced current. And that induced current, why? Induced current will be used. I have already described you induced current, and that induced current will be produced by using one instrument that is known as Du Bois Raymond induction coil. Du Bois Raymond induction coil. I will show you the instrument and the details of the instrument in my later classes. That is Du Bois Raymond induction coil. By using this Dubois Raymond induction coil, we will produce induced current and in that induced current will be the source of current for stimulation of the tissues. For running of the gram chymogram, we will use the direct current. In all other preparations, we will use only the induced current. The second one is the keys. Is the keys. The keys may be of different types. The first one is the simple key. Then second one is the short circuiting key. The third one is the reversing key. And last one is the tapping key. And these are different types of keys are used for making or breaking the circuit. Then then the next instrument we will use is the setting tone starting drum time of time. So next, first I will mention all name of all the instruments, then I will show you all the instruments one by one. Setting tone. Starting. Drum. Time of time. On this setting tone starting drum chymograph, we will record the response of the tissues or the contraction of the nerve muscle preparation. Then, so next instrument is the myograph board with stand. And that is a, an adjustable stand. Then, the fifth one, we will, the fifth one we will use is the writing lever writing lever writing lever here in our lab we will use the simplified writing lever the next one is the starting heart lever for any cardiac tissue preparation the recording of the compression of the cardiac tissues we will use the starting heart lever So you don't have to worry by just hearing the names of the instruments because in the later classes I will show you one, all the instruments one by one. Then the things will become clear. Next is the pulse commutator. Pulse commutator. By using pulse commutator, we can change the direction of the flow of current. 
then we will need time pressure time pressure for time pressure pressure we will use a tuning fork with vibration of 100 hertz then the stimulating stimulating electrodes stimulating electrodes for stimulation of the tissues then we will use then we will use interrupter with adjustable vibrating wheel vibrating wheel by using this instrument we can uh, different types of frequency of stimulation can be applied to the tissues then the other things we will require is that after completion of the experiment completion of the experiment we have to fix the graphs we have to fix the graphs by using a varnishing tool varnishing tool and that varnishing tool is nothing but it is a concentration of 2% of methylated 2% uh, of shellac or a resin that is in methylated spray and by dipping in the in that solution we can fix the contractions or the curves that is obtained from the nerve muscle preparation or the cardiac tissue then last thing that is the the most important of all the one is the the linger screw linger screw so this linger screw is iso osmotic and the ionic concentration of this linger screw to it is, is very much similar for survival of this cross tissue for a longer time so the composition of the linger screw to it or the ionic composition of this ionic composition of this linger screw we will use in our laboratory that contains sodium chloride sodium chloride that contains potassium chloride potassium chloride that contains sodium bicarbonate bicarbonate then calcium chloride and ultimately they are mixed with distilled water distilled water the amount of this one the amount of this different ions that is present in case of sodium chloride we will have to use 0 0.6 gram and in case of potassium chloride we have to use 0 0.075 gram of this potassium chloride then again sodium bicarbonate that is 0 0.01 gram 0 0.01 gram then calcium chloride that is again 0 0.01 gram and ultimately those are mixed in a distilled water of 100 ml that will give you the ringer's fluid and that is you have to remember it is iso osmotic and the ionic compositions are, are so suitable that the frog tissue can live for a longer duration when we will apply ringer's fluid to the non-muscle preparation or the cardiac tissues